Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've done a sit down video because I actually went back to London for the Christmas break and now it's January, the new year. So interview season is coming up if it's not already upon us. So on this week's video, I really, really, really wanted to focus in on interview questions, common ones, ones that I got asked in my Cornell PhD admission interview and how you can sort of maximize your chances at performing the best that you possibly can during the interview process. So let's dive in. For this video, we're bringing out the big guns. We're bringing out the big whiteboard because that's how I learn and take information in. So let's see if it works for this fun interview style thing. So the first thing you have to do when you're preparing for interviews is find out what you're actually preparing for. So this might seem obvious, but it's all very well saying I'm going for an interview. You need to find out what kind of interview it is. Is it a panel interview? Is it a one-to-one -one interview? Is it an informal interview? Is it a skills-based interview? Is it a task-based interview? There's loads of different things and the details of that should be within your like initial email or invitation. You can also look at the college's website because a lot of the time they have quite a lot of useful recruitment information for students incoming on their website. I know that Cornell had a whole page full of like helpful um, resources and information about what to expect from the interviews and they sort of gave you a couple of questions that you can start to prepare for in advance. Once you figured that out, I kind of get this a lot as a common question is whether you should read around who's interviewing you. I say yes, I would read around who's interviewing you. Like I wouldn't learn their life history and every single paper that they've ever published because like that's impossible and that's kind of like that's kind of lame. It's important to know the sort of area they're interested in because that could help you figure out what kinds of questions that they might try and ask you. Then we can try to minimize stress. So minimizing stress before the interview is really, really, really difficult, but try and prepare as much as you can for the interview. For example, is it an online interview or is it an in-person interview? I know that online interviews are becoming more and more and more common now. So mine were all online, but I know that they are starting to bring back in-person interviews for some places. So like just double check that because you wouldn't want to turn up on Zoom if it's an actual place because that would be kind of embarrassing. If it is an online interview, make sure that you've figured out where you're going to do it early. So pick a place, check the Wi-Fi connection, that kind of thing, and pick an outfit. Go for something that you feel confident in, that you feel great in, because then you'll perform your best in that interview. If it's an in-person interview, again, picking your outfit is also important, but maybe do like a dry run to the interview place and figure out where the room is or get instructions so that you don't feel like you're panicking on the day about not being able to find where you're going. It just helps minimize stress. Then we can start looking at preparing answers to some common interview questions, which is what we're gonna cover now with the big whiteboard. What is your motivation for doing a PhD? Oh, this question is always a classic one. I've been asked it so many times. It's often the first, one of the first questions that interviewers tend to ask you. So it's really, really important to have an answer prepared for this one. So in this one, I like to include my personal motivations. You've got to try and make it personal. Don't just say because it's the next step or because I wanted a doctor degree or because I want to increase my chance of getting a job. They need to understand where this is coming from for you. What are your motivations? So bringing in personal experiences, personal anecdotes are really, really good here. For example, um, you could describe your early involvement in research, like the earliest experiences that you had of research. So for me personally, that was my master's. I hadn't even considered a career in research until I did my master's and was like, oh, hang on a second. I actually love this and enjoy this a lot more than I did my clinical work. So that kind of experience really shaped my decision to do research. It's also here that you can kind of let your enthusiasm shine through because if you're talking about yourself and personal experiences and why you in particular are passionate about this, then showing that enthusiasm and letting that shine through is an absolute must. I would also try and include your career ambitions in this question. So would a, is a PhD going to help you get to where you ultimately want to be in your life? So whether that's in academia as a professor or teaching or um, working in a startup or working in industry, like showing that you've thought about your life after a PhD and are not just thinking that a PhD is the natural next step after an undergraduate degree or a master's, showing that you've actually put some thought into it and it's going to help you get where you want to be. Tying back to that specific school, make sure you bring it back to why you want to do a PhD PhD there? Why have you applied to their school? Just add in a couple of lines as to why your personal motivations led you to apply to this specific PhD program. Can you explain your role in one of your research projects? This is another really, really common question that gets asked at PhD interviews. And it's really your chance to showcase why you are best suited to this role in their PhD program. It's a great opportunity to be able to be like, look at what I've done and show off your achievements. But you have to remember some key points. What you don't want to 
to do is list what you've done. No one cares what you've done. They care what you learned from it and how that can benefit them. So how can your experience and expertise and the skills that you've learned, whether they're scientific skills or more softer skills or like translational skills, how that can make you a good PhD candidate? That is what they want to know when they're asking you this question. So I tend to follow a three point structure. What did you do? Describe what you did. Were you a research assistant? Were you a clinical research associate? Were you writing an independent research project? What did you do? What is your role in this research experience? The second point is what you actually did. So it's all very well saying, I was a research associate in this such and such as lab. What did you personally do? And what did you personally contribute to the research effort? Were you in charge of categorizing all the samples or doing the imaging or writing the manuscript? What exactly did you do? Then the third point, what did you learn from this? So this is the most important thing. And this is actually what they're trying to squeeze out of you when they ask you this question. It's what you learn from it. So did you learn how to analyze data, present it succinctly, communicate your scientific ideas? You know, what did you actually get out of that? And how can you then translate that into future research? So they want to know that you've learned translational skills here. When it comes to choosing your research experience and which one you actually talk about, I would say choose one that you feel like you can talk about the most, um, stress the significance of that project so I would definitely give a brief overview of what the project was so I was a research assistant working on um, figuring out the causes of canine osteosarcoma for example and in that I was responsible for categorizing the samples and analyzing the data or whatever and then what did I learn on a data analysis coding presentation blah, 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 and then link it back so this helped us gain a better understanding of what caused canine osteosarcoma in this case do the one that you feel you learnt a lot from you could talk about and it was the biggest moment for you because that's when your enthusiasm and passion will shine through what would you say are your strengths okay this one is so common <sighs> again it kind of follows on from what i said before but it really is your chance to showcase why you are a suitable candidate for this i would again follow the same structure as we did before so avoid 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 listing all your skills anyone can say i'm organized i'm a team player i'm excellent communicator what they want to see here is examples so i would first list the strengths that you feel that you've demonstrated the most examples for so whether that's like collaborative working within multidisciplinary teams for example i I, um, was part of this research team where we had people working on da, 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 and it was a very collaborative experience and enabled me to listen to other people's ideas take them on board and figure out how to improve my own work and do you see what I mean so you're not just listing that you're able to work well in a team but it also showcases your ability to communicate and take criticism on board and all of these things so you want to pick things that have experiences you can back up basically. So that's one option. The other option is making it very skills based as well. So you could say like, what skills do you have? You're really strong at data analysis. For example, you help analyze X amount of data for this research project, which ultimately results in a publication, things like that. It's really important to then link it back to why you want to do a PhD in the first place. So saying I really want to like strengthen this skill or learn this or da -da -da, not just listen and be like, yeah, so I'm excellent. You should be like, and that's what I want to work on and improve. And I feel like I can offer to the PhD thing. And can you describe your weaknesses? Oh, we cannot talk about strengths without talking about weaknesses. This is the dreaded question and it gets asked all the time. Here are some things to avoid when you're answering this question. And you're gonna have to wait until next week to find out how to answer that question because I've been editing it and it's actually a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. And instead of people getting bored and like tuning out and missing out on these golden nuggets of information on unpacking interview questions, I decided to make this a two-parter. So this is kind of a snap decision, um, but I think it's kind of fun. In part two, we're going to cover the final remaining few questions. There's like four or five there and what to do after the interview. So yeah, um don't miss out on that hit subscribe so you don't miss out on next week's video because we will be covering the remainder of it next week and um yeah i'll see you guys next time okay bye but yes Ugh. okay it's fine it's fine fine it is interview season coming up an interview season waits for no one <laughs> already <laughs> oh my god max i literally can't speak what am i saying Okay, let's try again. Right. <laughs>